Hello everyone, welcome to Practical GCP. I had a very interesting discovery on using Cloud Run as a pops up consumer, but not via the normal one you probably heard of, which is the push subscription. But this is about how to utilize it for pull subscription, which I'll describe in the following session. It has a lot of benefits in my opinion. So I can't wait to tell you, I put a lot of effort into this. It's, it's very exciting. So first of all, uh, the content I'll cover today will be first, we'll talk about different ways to build a PubSub message consumer, um, and the pros and cons and issues with these things, and why I think this isn't good enough, right, with what we've got in there. I'll describe some of the, the reasons why, why that's the case. And we'll then move on to the PubSub pool consumer by the cloud run job, which is kind of a new service currently in beta published by Google, but it's very powerful. Um, and what we would like to achieve with this solution. And finally, I'll walk through the code and I'll give you a demo of what I've done. Okay, so first of all, different ways to build a PubSub message consumer. So in this diagram, you can see there's typically two ways, right? One is via the push subscription of PubSub, which you can push um, lots of messages to the Cloud Run endpoint, which is the HTTPS endpoint. So this is um, also doing it via a push subscriber of PubSub. So it's all via HTTPS requests, right? So that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is to pull as an event stream, right? So that's uh, quite different. There isn't any HTTPS calls. There is basically a pool, continuous pool from the PubSub pool subscriber, different kind of subscriber, right? Via typically deployed uh, the work workload deployed into a GKE cluster. All right. That's that's in a nutshell what the two ways that you can deploy a PubSub consumer. All right now, why I think this is not good enough, right? So this I've encountered quite a few issues with both solutions. So if you look at the top one, uh, the push subscription via HTTPS. So one of the things is you, you can't easily batch messages, right? So because these are all separate requests that goes via separate HTTPS request, here's the API uh, of the Cloud Run endpoint, right? That's how it works. Um, and if you have a downstream system, uh, let's say it sits on the internet that you, you run your, your stuff in, via the, in within the VPC that you have to make outbound calls. So that's typically go via CloudNet Gateway, which has limited concurrency. You have a uh, you know, number of sockets and the ones that's uh, exhausted and then you run into all sorts of exponential backup problems. Um, and also it's difficult to control the flow of the messages. So in a lot of the scenarios, especially in the data engineering world, you get a downstream system doesn't actually scale. Uh, it just doesn't, uh, and it, or it can't actually handle too many connections, right? So in those scenarios, uh, the the way you can actually control it to a degree, which is using the the maximum uh, instance setting in Cloud Run, you just waste basically wouldn't give it too much, right? Um, and then you can also change the single instance concurrency to limit that way. But it's a bit clunky because what happens is you're not actually restricting the how much messages you pull uh, from PubSub because it's pushed, right? You can't control that. So what happens is when you get the message you have to push it back because if you can't, can't consume it, it will then return a 429 HTTP, HTTP code. Then you know these are not errors, these are just kind of a hits the limit. With the pool subscriptions, which you know you, you don't have some of these uh, issues with the push ones, but then what you typically have to do is to deploy to a Kubernetes cluster, rather that's Kubernetes, Kubernetes or Kubernetes Autopilot, you still have some shared infrastructure to maintain. And this can cause problems when you have multiple teams wants to have independence on the infrastructure, which um, typically cause a lot of problems in a large organization because you basically put a necessary burden on each team. They have to deploy their own namespace. If you have, uh, if you are, you know, if you need to monitor your application, you need to deploy additional stuff into the GK container. Um, the workload debugging is all in the same place. It's not the easiest to debug, um, and also at the same time. If you uh, have on call rotors, right? So in this situation, rolling back on a GKE cluster is not exactly the easiest, right? But compared to Cloud Run, it's super easy to roll back. Um, and finally, uh, this is one of the interesting ones. So 
in, especially in a large organization, sometimes if you start start off with a small team, then you move on to a bigger team. Uh, maybe initially you were not using shared VPC because you didn't need it. And then later you need to move to a different VPC from your private VPCs. And now you realize you have to redeploy all of your infrastructure, which is a nightmare. But with Cloud Run, if it works, then you can just uh, actually attach to different, using the VPC connector to attach to a different VPC, then there's absolutely zero infrastructure manage nothing nothing to to redeploy um, so isn't that good right so this is the reason why I think the um, existing one so far with either approach is, is not good enough okay let's have a look at the cloud run job so cloud run job so keep in mind I'm not talking about the cloud run service you deploy the server APIs right so this is a currently in preview right if Google doesn't make this live uh, I would be very, very surprised because it's super powerful and you would know later on in this session. So if you look at what's a highlighted part, what it says is unlike a cloud run service, right? That the other one is called a service, which listens for and service request and service request. A cloud run job only runs its task and exit when finished. So it's basically a batch job, right? It's not something that you run uh, and expect it to be there 24 seven. It's a batch job. Uh, but it doesn't listen to any of the uh, requests, HTTP requests, or serve any requests, and it, it cannot accept arbitrary parameters as execution, right? So it's basically something um, that you you run as a batch drop, right? So it it's but it has a it has a lot of time limit, right? It has the concept of you can see later on where it says it has number of task parallelization. You can parallel how many you want to run uh, at the same time. Uh, but it's, it's basically a batch drop that you run. Uh, it doesn't actually run continuously or for a long period of time. So this leads to our question about what we're trying to achieve or what we want to achieve with this solution, right? So because there are some challenges, as I mentioned, the uh, the Cloud Run drop isn't a something that is designed for you to run 24 seven. If you run a pool subscriber, that's what you typically would expect, right? So. We have three points. So one is it has to work with Papa pool subscription, right? We need to be able to deploy that into Cloud Run, and then we need to be able to use the job to pull messages uh, from the PubSub subscription. And it can't have downtime, right? So messages should be and must be consumed in real time because one of the most biggest benefits of uh, having message consumer building your microservices in an asynchronous way is, is then you need your message to be as real time as possible for a lot of these use cases. So you can't have downtime. So you now something to think about if you have a batch drop, then it goes down, what are you gonna do with it, right? So then it has to also scale. So this is something uh, I knew about this thing in preview for a while, but the auto scaling part is something I couldn't quite figure out exactly how to do that because when you submit the batch drop, you can define the the, the parallelization of how many you wanna parallel lights. But for a message consumer, how would you know that, right? Because you you have to check how many messages you've got in there on the other side. That, but that's not when you would, you would always know at the time of uh, you know submitting your execution. So how do we solve that? Okay, so here is the design of this uh, of this uh, something I came up with. Step one, right? So the the concept of cloud run job is. First of all, it's still like the cloud run service. You have to deploy it, right? You have to deploy the job first. So that's the that's the kind of the wrapper, right? So we deploy the job and then you can execute it. So there's two parts to it. One is the cloud run job itself, and the second part is the execution, right? So the first part of design is you need to you know build your Docker container just like you deploy a cloud run job, push into artifact registry, and then deploy as a cloud run job, not as a service. This is where you can set your you know, CPU, your RAM, your pool consumer entry point, you know, what you're gonna do with it, and then the VPC connector, uh, if you wish, right? That if you need your cloud run job to actually access under the service within your VPC. Step two is to, you need to trigger the cloud run execution. So that's typically done in this design um, using a uh, cloud scheduler. So you can set your cloud scheduler to trigger your cloud run uh, job executions. Uh, you can trigger one, right? You can trigger more in a you know a set schedule, right? So then each one of those jobs can then pull messages from the pub sub 
pool subscription. So one thing, if you don't know already, is that the way the pool subscription works is you can obviously have one or more uh, workers. Just in this case, it will be different executions or different tasks to pull messages from the subscription. So if you have one worker, then all of the messages is gonna to go to that one worker. If you have two, it will evenly split it. If you have three, it will evenly split into the three. If you have a hundred, it will go evenly into those one hundred. It will sort out the, you know, which one should receive what automatically. You don't have to deal with that, right? So this makes the uh, parallelization of deploying the uh, the cloud run jobs, right, and the executions uh, a a possibility, right? But let's come back to that in a bit. And step three is the auto scaler. So this is this is it looks a bit more complex. Uh, but let me explain. So it's actually quite straightforward if you think about it. So first of all, the top bit, right, this is the bit of the previous page, this is the cloud run execution, let's say, we're already triggering it, we deploy the cloud run job, we have the execution, we trigger, let's say every minute, right. So you trigger every minute, and it will run a cloud run job every minute, it will trigger a new execution. Um, and then what you do is because the job, right, the, the cloud run job execution, it will basically run based on a preset of, let's say, how many tasks you want to have. You can have 10, you can have three, you can have five. It doesn't really matter, but it won't know how to scale up. So, for example, if you have a lot more messages in the message queue, it, it will just keep slowing crunch through all of the messages. So the way to actually you can you can give you more resources is to buy setting uh, more tasks that you allow it to run. But don't worry about it. I'll give you a demo later. I will show you exactly what I mean by that. Um, so basically, you have to increase the number of parallelization on the tasks. You can you you allow the execution to run right in parallel. So then, if you have it's like you have a hundred workers now all trying to consume the messages from PubSub in parallel, um, right? But how do we set that dynamically, right? That this is the tricky part. Okay, so now what we have is in the stack driver metrics, right? We have a, a way to check the back pressure using the how long the messages, right? The messages has been in the message queue, right? So this is a metric that you can use uh, to tell you if you actually have back pressure, right? In the pops up, you can check in stack of metrics to see do do I have pressure back pressure based on uh, the messages delays the message delays right in the message queue. If you find there's a delay, which you can define a threshold based on number of seconds, right? The oldest message, right? The oldest message has been in the in the message queue. Then you can say if it's over that threshold, let's say if it's thirty seconds, right? The oldest message has been there for more than thirty seconds, right? So now I want to um, basically trigger the scaling behavior, which is by right setting the um, the wrapper, which is the cloud run job, to give it. Let's say by default it used to be three uh, tasks. Now I'm gonna set it to one hundred. Then the next execution, when the uh, when I, what I said here is that it will affect the subsequent triggers of the executions, right? So then when the next one kicks in. It will schedule 100. Uh, it will schedule 100 tasks in the, instead of three. So this is how the auto scaling kind of behaves, right? So, uh, so later on when I show this, it's a bit difficult to kind of explain and understand. But later on, I'll show you a demo. I'll show you where these parameters are. I'll show you a uh, exactly how it works in reality. I've got a live demo uh, set up, and you can see this scaling up and scaling down with that behavior. Um, and one thing I do want to mention is that um, in order to achieve the real timeness, right, of the of this, um, you can't just schedule, let's say, cloud run job to run for a period of time, and then uh, you let it die, right, and then you trigger the second one because then you're going to have a gap. So the way to do that, I'll show you in the source code later on, is basically you set the cloud run job right the execution to run let's say for two minutes right let's say you, you let it run for two minutes but you schedule your cloud run execution to run every one minute so what that means is you always have two in play not one right you ha always have two cloud run job executions running at the same time so because it has a one minute overlap right 
So the first one would die after two minutes, and then you will have the second one already running one minute. So this is how you can achieve the uh, there's no downtime in between. So all of the messages will be picked up exactly uh, in real time. So this is the uh, the overall design if I put it together, right? So I've, all I've done is I've added the cloud build part to deploy the cloud run job. So let's see how we resolve these three, uh, the three parts again. So yes, so it works. So this package, uh, the build and package is just a Docker container. You have an entry point and then that's the pool consumer entry point, right? So that's the first one satisfied. No time, downtime message are consumed real time. It's like what I explained in the last slide. We need to have an overlap. So the scheduler, we can schedule every one minute, but a cloud run job has a timeout of two minutes. So you will consume the messages for two minutes and it will kill itself. Uh, great, it will great, 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 great shut down. Then you always have a one minute overlap in this particular case, which means it actually will run 24 seven. Um, how to auto scale? Uh, so this is where we use the stack driver matrix to check the time uh, since right the when the, the oldest messages that arrived in the pub sub message queue in the subscription and then if that is more than let's say a threshold of 30 seconds um, we will basically update the task parallelization in the cloud run job itself which will subsequently affect the uh, all the other triggers after that right and then it will it can change from the execution, which used to be one execution with three tasks to one execution to 100 tasks. But also the cloud function does, it also does two things, right? So what it checks is if there's nothing, there's no delays anymore. If there's no messages left, then it will scale right back to the minimum. So it actually does it both ways. So this is why this solution I think is very powerful because you can actually just deploy this thing and monitor the cloud run jobs. Uh, uh, and then using the the stack driver metrics to decide to determine and when to to set the uh, the task parallelization to lower or higher to achieve the auto scaling. Okay, so now let's look at the demo and the code. Um, so after you've seen this, it should be a lot more straightforward to this, right? So um, I think let's have a look at the uh, the code first because it's easier. That I show you the code and I will show the deployment. You can see where they are. So this is the code repo. I'll share this as MIT license. Feel free to just use it yourself. Um, there's a few things going on in here. There's a few global variables, uh, environment variables are set in here, which is just make it a bit more convenient. Sorry, I didn't have time to do this in Terraform, but you have everything kind of in here for you. So uh, the service count creation, and then you've got the deployment, uh, the Docker build. All of these are in the um, the build images YAML. So this is basically using the Docker file to build. Uh, if you look at the Docker file, it's something really simple. Uh, it just uses the um, uh, you know the consumer to actually uh, to actually build your build your uh, application. So if you look at the consumer so all it does is it's just like how you would run it on your laptop or how would you actually deploy to a GKE runner. Right, so all, all you have here is, here I've actually set the flow control of the message to 50. Uh, this is this is one of the benefits you get with the pool-based consumers. And then you have the um, the other things is basically just uh, attaching this to a subscription and it starts uh, consuming the messages. And in the callback of all the features, you act on it, right? This is the code I took from one of the previous sessions, nothing has changed. Um, but it is now deployed into the cloud run because here you see it's packaged, right? It's packaged as a container. And then the deployment uh, is using this because this is still in beta. Uh, but I do think there's a Terraform one for this already. So it's probably a bit easier than using cloud run, uh, the GT cloud command, because then uh, you kind of need two to one for the uh, creation, one for the update, which is a bit clunky. But here, all you do is you have the image itself, right? So this is always deploy the commit hash. So it doesn't have to figure out what latest means. So you always use the same, uh, the, the, the hash that you give it. Um, you specify the number of tasks. You set a few environment variables. You give it the subscription ID. You set which region you're going to deploy it to and which service kind you're going to use for the service to run, right? So the same for the updates. Uh, but that's what the consumer is all about. Right, the consumer doesn't actually have much at all, and then you know it, it just got wrapped around uh, within that. Um, 
I have a demo producer. This is again from one of the previous sessions. I'm going to use this uh, in a bit to send a lot of messages into the message queue. Um, so you can see the uh, the behavior of uh, scaling and triggering that happening as I do it, right? So uh, the auto scaler, I just put in the subfolder in here. This one is the that thing I showed you in the diagram. Um, so if you look at this, uh, it's all in this domain.py. It's deployed as a cloud function because you don't need all of that complexity with the cloud run to deploy this. It's, it's a batch drop anyways in itself. Um, so here it says a few things um, to get the, because I couldn't find the, the Python wrapper for, uh, in, because what this does, if you look at here is you're actually, uh, what I'm doing is the auto scale would use a job name, right? Which is compiled and then concatenated using the region dash run the Google API.com because I couldn't find a wrapper. So this is just the, uh, I, I compiled everything from scratch. And this get access token is, uh, this one is the one that you're getting from the, from the if you run it in a, uh, in a cloud function instance. And if you run it locally, we'll use this one if you, if you don't have the other one. Um, and then here you have the headers, which is where you have to set the bearer token to authenticate, right? And authorize with the uh, the cloud run uh, API itself. Uh, so this basically subsequently does what I mentioned earlier. Um, you, you have a look if there is a delay, right? So this basically checks using this function here, uh, using so this is the uh, what I mentioned earlier with the oldest enact message age so this is the one that you can check uh, you can get the the time interval uh, in here and then you make a request to the stack driver endpoint which will then get you the um, the latency you would like to call it so you can basically decide uh, you know if the latency is greater than the maximum seconds which I set it in the as a variable uh, for you to, uh, you know, to you, you to to the tolerance level, right? And then you basically say true, otherwise they say false, right? But the rest is straightforward. You, you what would you what you do is uh, if the delay is high, right? You set it to the maximum task count, which is set in, at at the very top. So the minimum is uh, three, the default, and the maximum is one hundred. You can obviously make this more dynamic if you prefer to store this somewhere else. Um, but uh, this is kind of the simplified version of saying if you by default you have three, the maximum you want to be a hundred. If it's in contention, throw a hundred in. When it's finished, then set it back to what it was before. And that's basically what this bit is doing. Um, so here it uses the patch request API to the uh, uh, to the, uh, the the cloud run uh, job uh, itself. So you basically retrieve the job as a job and object in here, right? You can see it's retrieved the job uh, in, in here. This is getting the job. And then uh, you patch the job with the um, the task count updated. So that's that's what it's all doing, right? So this is this is this is the whole whole code. Um, so it, it, it actually does work. So let me show you just in a second. Um, right, so first of all, you can see this is the two uh, class uh, schedulers. Uh, I've deployed one is for the auto scaler, one is for the consumer. So because they both run via triggers, um, the auto scaler invoker I've done it for every two minutes because I don't, you know, need it to scale up and down too often. You can set this to whichever kind of minute you prefer. The cloud run I've got it running every minute, but uh, I have a timeout within the the container which is every two minutes, so you have a one minute overlap, right? So this is this is what I was talking about earlier. Uh, if you look at the message queue right now, do I have any messages in here? Uh, I don't because it has been uh, used. So while I'm talking, I'm just going to pump a lot of messages into there again. Uh, let's go. Okay, I'm just going to uh, put a lot more messages in, let this run. Okay, I'll leave this running in the background and I'll then show you the history of, uh, uh, of this. Uh, so this is the deployed uh, cloud run service. I'll show. I'll, I'll show. You, I'll have. Let's have a look at the the cloud run deployment. The cloud run drop deployment itself first, right? So this is the cloud run drop deployment. If you look at, if you edit this, right? So this is done via cloud build. But here you have the URL with the hash, right? The commit hash in there. Uh, this is the thing I was talking about with the number of tasks you want to set it to. So this is done at the deployment time. It's not execution time, right? There's a difference. This is done at the deployment time of the cloud run job, right? And then 
you can set your memory, the number of CPUs, but in this case, I don't really care. It's just one CPU, enough RAM, uh, because I can run this in parallel, in parallel, parallelly, right? The task timeout is, uh, is uh, this is when the Cloud Run instance is gonna kill itself, but I actually got some code in there to kill it more gracefully. Um, instead of uh, trying to just let it kill my own task when the time is out. Uh, this is the retries you set. Here is you've got the how many task concurrencies you want it to run. So let's say if you set it to three, um, your limit has to, is up to three, right? So so I don't think there's much point setting this. So if I set this to 100, I just want it to go to 100 as much as it can because this is not really a batch batch job. This is more of a, uh, this is a consumer, right? So, but this is what you can, you can do right. You could all bunch of other other things. This is environment variables I've got set. You've got the connection details. You can set the VPC right. In, you can set the VPCs in here, and then on the security side, you can change your service account, set your service account. That's that's all it is. Uh, uh, it's in preview, but this is very kind of complete. Um, so I'm just gonna refresh this page, and I'll show you what actually happened um, uh, below here. Right. So you can see. Uh, while I was kind of uh, recording this video uh, in the last, I think this is like an hour or so, uh, you know, when I previously pumped in like 3 million messages, you can see it was, it got scaled up and then it got scaled down, right? So when you see, you can see what's inside is, uh, uh, you can see the logs of every single task. Uh, so there is an environment variable you can also retrieve in your container itself to know which task is actually running. Um, but in the logs, you can you can basically see you see the container exiting or whatever. So you can see uh, everything in there. The configuration, you can see the number of jobs, uh, the task has been set to, right? So and then the uh, the parallelization, the uh, RAM, the connections, and all that stuff. Um, oh, you can see this is interesting. Um, so. The job now has uh, okay, so it has the number of tasks three because it's been scaled back. Okay, um, yeah, so this is still being triggered. If you look at the history, right? So now you can see uh, it's going up and up, right? It's it's just basically on the minimum number of uh, uh, tasks, parallel tasks, and then it will just basically run. Uh, and then you can see there's always two, right? This has been running for hours, I think already. I've set it since I set it up. You always have two running in parallel. So if one stops and the other one's still running, you have this one minute overlap. So you it never actually goes down uh, in a 24 hour period, right? So, and this is actually the uh, the the one I deploy for the auto scaler. So if you look at the logs, uh, let's see if we can find something a bit more interesting. Um, okay. Okay, you can see the message is going up, right? It's almost a million now. So because I was sending it on the other side, let's see if it's finished. Okay, it's still sending. Um, okay, so it's now it's sending messages, messages going up. So you see, you start seeing the message age in here, right? So this this is the metrics of all these annex messages. I'm using this one to decide when the uh, when the, the 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 message queue has uh, has back pressure, right? Right now, let's see if it's, you can see something interesting happening. So there's still three workers. So in the in here, uh, right now, as I can see, so this is this is this is now, right? Oh, can you see in here? So uh, because I didn't have any messages in there, so the latency of the older messages was zero zero zero, and then suddenly, uh, because this is done every sixty second interval in the uh, stack driver metrics. You can see now the current latency of the audit message is 75 seconds. So you decided to change the task count to 100, right? This is what just happened. If I go back into the, um, if I go back to here, now can you see that the latest one has got scheduled has 100 parallel tasks. The previous one here, you've got three, right? So this is one required, but then you realize this, this workload that came in and then it started this one. Um, so what I'm hoping to see is like previously, this matches would go up, right? And because the auto scaler kicked in now, then so this this UI is always a bit of out of date, right? So it's, it's, it's I'm just trying to see if it's kind of a, I can see more real time of what is happening, but this is going up and it will go down, right? So it will, it will consume the messages. You can look at the pool uh, to see the pool message throughput in here, the acknowledgement request. So this is, yeah, you can see this is this is happening, right?
I think that's kind of enough to show you what this is actually doing, uh, and uh, to show you, you know, this this one, this, the same behavior is going to happen like the previous one because I pump a lot of messages in. It will go up to one hundred. Once it's done, it will go back to three, um, and that's your minimum, right? So this is this is all this is all happening with the with the message consumers, uh, and yes, right. So let's go back to the slide. Uh, Okay, let's summarize. So the Cloud Run job is, in my opinion, is a very powerful addition for the serverless pool consumers, right? So think about the issues I mentioned with the push subscription and also the GK deployment, uh, the VPC migration, all of these hustle, you literally do not have to worry about using this approach. So it's very, very powerful. Um, and um, it's possible to uh, you know consume messages in real time by overlapping, so that's kind of a technique uh, I'm using. I've been testing it quite for quite a bit. Uh, obviously, haven't been running this on production yet, but uh, you know there's there's no uh, reason why this wouldn't work uh, because the scheduler kick in and it will just keep scheduling. You can make it run a little bit longer, right? So if you prefer uh, this thing to run a little bit longer, let's say if you schedule the job every ten minutes and you run the job for thirty minutes. And then you have a you know twenty minutes overlap. You you could do that, right? So, but I think um, in my opinion, I would. It depends on your service, right? If your service, the auto scaler is actually a very optional thing, right? So if your service doesn't really require uh, auto scaling, you can just throw uh, you know throw like five five to ten workers par parallel tasking there when you run it, right? So and because the the um, the cost is relatively low, especially if you put smaller like a CPU resources in there and memory. So it, you, you may not need auto scaling at all. You know, it depends on what your traffic pattern is going to be. But obviously for uh, the high traffic services or especially the one that can scale or require you to scale very rapidly, let's say if you get hit by Black Friday traffic, right, then you have so many messages come in that you need to handle. You know, for that particular service, you can use the auto scaler. You can set the maximum to one thousand, right? And I will run it for a few minutes, and it will, you know, uh, crunch through all of the messages, and it'll scale right down. It won't cost you much at all, right? So that's, I think, what the real power is. So you can auto scale. The answer is, but it requires a service to do it, which is not ideal. Uh, I will, I'll hope, like, a, uh, if 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 uh, if if Cloud Run can release something, you know, can do this automatically, such as using. Uh, the metrics that I put in there to monitor, you know, you can set, let's say you monitor a stack driver metric, then it can automatically adjust the the uh, amount of uh, amount of uh, workers you've got, the amount of uh, tasks you've got. I think that would be amazing, right? Then, then you don't, you know, you don't really have to do anything yourself. It will just, you know, you just get, you just, all you have to do is just scheduling and building deploy, and that's it. All right, uh, that's the end of the uh, today's uh, session. I have been very excited to show you this, and I think I've been I've been going on for this for for the last two days. This is quite amazing. Uh, then the Cloud Run job uh, is able to achieve something uh, this powerful. Uh, so I hope you find it very useful, uh, just like what I do. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Go, go, go.